Hello and welcome to this first video of the new channel. My name's Chris and to start things off I'm going to be showing you how I make various dungeon tiles and little bits of terrain for use with tabletop RPGs like D&D. To show you the kind of thing I'm talking about, uh, here's a quick little room I've set up uh, with a bunch of different terrain pieces thrown in and I'll just drop a miniature in there for scale. Now, as you might have noticed, I'm using the 2.5D method so if you're not familiar with the concept, just pause the video in a few seconds and there'll be some information on the screen. I'll also add a few links to a couple of channels in the description below so you can go and check them out. Okay then, so now that's all out of the way, I should probably explain what I'll be doing differently. So instead of having to paint everything that you've made, I've drawn lots of different textures that you can glue to the cardboard to begin with, including one for the stone floor, one for the wooden furniture, the barrel, the sacks and so on. For those of us that might not have any paints, or if you're like me, you just want to get things made and on the table as quickly as possible. To that end, there'll be a, a link in the description below that will show you where you can get all of these PDF files for free, so that you can have a go at making a few yourself. Plus, there'll also be a pay what you want option over on RPG Now, but uh, that's just there for anyone who might want to throw away a dollar or two my way to help support the channel. Uh, but uh, as I say, that's purely optional and I'd personally recommend just grabbing the PDF files for free to begin with. But anyway, uh, enough of all that, let's get started. Right then, the, the first thing you'll need to do is print off the textures from the PDF file. Uh, as I say, the link's in the description. And you'll probably need to print out around two or three floor textures for every one wall texture, uh, and then as many doors as you think you might need. But uh, before I go any further, it's, it's probably best that I just quickly show you how I like to measure things out. So let's assume I'm going to make a small corner passage that looks something like this. Because we'll be adding a wall around some of the edges, we'll, we'll need to add a half inch border around the entire tile. That's even the exits. So I'll just quickly shade in these areas here, uh, just to show where the walls would go. Like that. And uh, as I say, we need to have a half inch border on the exits here. So that when we connect a passage to a room, for example, everything still lines up nicely. Okay, so uh, let's make our first tile. And all I'm doing here is trimming off some of the excess paper. Also, when you're printing these off, uh, make sure you're printing them at full size and you've not got any kind of fit to page option checked or, or anything like that. That'll ensure that the inbuilt grid prints out at one inch per square. And I'll just get rid of all this rubbish. Next, we'll need something to glue the floor texture to, and you can use double corrugated cardboard or foam board or something similar. I'll actually be using this foam board for the upcoming sci-fi tiles that I've got planned, so for things like this, uh, but since I've already used cardboard for the rest of my dungeon tiles, I'm going to continue to use cardboard throughout this example. Now we just take the printed texture and apply plenty of glue to the back. And it's also worth noting that I like to use a slightly thicker paper than the cheap photocopier type stuff uh, for this kind of thing, just so that the corrugation of the cardboard doesn't show through too much. And as you can see, uh, in this example I'm just using a cheap glue stick, uh, but you could use a spray adhesive or something like that. Okay then, so now that that's done, we just need to stick it down to a suitable piece of cardboard, uh, Press it down and make sure it's all flat. And then do the same for the wall texture. So in this example, let's make a simple passage five squares long by two squares wide. And uh, as I said before, we need to give the tile a half inch border around all of the sides to allow for the walls. So I'll, uh, I'll just mark those out first and then cut the tile to size like so. Leaving us with something like this. Then we take some of the wall texture and uh, here I've got some that's left over from a previous tile 
and cut that into half inch wide strips. It's hard to see at this angle, but when you're cutting these, try to cut the walls perpendicular to the corrugation of the cardboard, if that makes any sense. Um, you can probably see what I mean a little bit better in the next shot. So uh, anyway, once all that's done, just cut off any excess. Measure the length of wall that you'll need, just by laying it on top of the tile. And then cut it to size. It's all pretty straightforward stuff, really. Then, all that's left to do is glue the walls in place. Once again, I'm just using a glue stick here, though uh, a hot glue gun might be a better option for this part. It's also worth mentioning that uh, if you are going to use a glue stick, um, you might need to insert a barbecue skewer or a toothpick um, into the, the lower corrugation of the walls just to push it down onto the floor tile to get a better adhesion. And that's all there is to it. So let's just show you a couple of made earlier and as you can see the, the exits joined together perfectly and considering they only took a few minutes to make they, they don't actually look too bad. So uh, yeah, uh, once you've got a bunch of different rooms and passages made uh, you should be good to go. But we're not quite done yet, um, at least not for this video, so uh, let's move on and uh, make a few doors. So, as you've probably noticed, uh, each door printout has enough pieces to make four individual doors. And the first thing we need to do is roughly cut out all of the parts for one door, and then trim the back of one door exactly to size. Obviously, you could do it the other way around if you prefer, but if you're making several doors at the same time, it's best to stick to one method, just so that you don't get the fronts and the backs mixed up. Once that's done, we can glue the front of the door to a piece of thick cardboard. Again, I'm just using a glue stick and uh, make sure it's nice and flat. Then we can take a bit of thin cardboard. Uh, in this instance, it's just the back of one of those do not bend envelopes and glue on the supplied floor texture. There we go. Next it's just a matter of cutting the door to size, uh, obviously be careful when using a sharp knife for things like this. And then do exactly the same thing with the base, like so. Now we can take the back of the door, i.e. the one that's already been cut to size, uh, and cover it with glue. Um, it's a little hard to see here, but uh, just give it a second, and uh, there it is. And once you're sure it's the right way up, uh, stick it to the other side of the door piece. There we go. I'll just take a few seconds to make sure it's all stuck down nice and firmly. Okay. And then it's just a matter of taking a hot glue gun. Uh, this particular one is just one of those cheap ones you can pick up for five or six pounds off eBay. And uh, apply a thin line of glue to the underside of the door and stick it to the middle of the base. And there you have it, a completed door. But before I end this video, I do just want to point out that, uh, yes, the doors are intentionally a tiny bit smaller than two inches wide. And uh, I've done it this way so that they don't catch or clip on the walls when you're putting them down or removing them from play. As the last thing you want is to have the door get stuck and then destroy half of your dungeon when you try to pull it away. So let's just tilt this towards the camera for a slightly better angle. And there's the finished pieces. Hopefully, uh, you'll agree that while these might not be the best looking or even the most durable tiles, uh, they are super quick and easy to make, uh, possibly even to the point of being disposable, uh, but they should work perfectly fine for most types of dungeon. But uh, that's it for now. Uh, like if you've liked the video, and next time we'll have a go at making a couple of pillars. See you then.